okay? Yeah, I prefer just audio. I understand. All the, watch, all the people watching prefer just audio. <laughs> I totally understand. Well, first off, before we uh, get started with questions from our media, just one quick opening question for you. Thank you again for joining us. Um, you know, just what does it mean from, from your perspective to have two cars um, from Joe Gibbs Racing battling for the championship this weekend in Phoenix? Well, I think, first of all, we're thrilled to be a part of the championship weekend and to get two cars in there. I got to tell you, that last 50 laps of Martinsville, I don't think I've ever experienced something like that because we actually went into that race with all three cars you didn't know what was going to happen. And that last 50 laps, I still didn't know what was going to happen. And so uh, it was a thrill for us to get Denny and Martin in. And so a big deal for us, a thrill for our race team, and so proud of everybody at Joe Gibbs Racing. And God's blessed us with so many uh, great people that are working there. And so we're thrilled to be a part of the weekend. We're excited about going to Phoenix. All right. Well, now we're going to go to questions. We're going to get to as many questions as we can in the time that we have um, today. And to kick us off, we're going to go to Dave Moody. Dave, go ahead with your question. Hi, Coach. Uh, you and Rick have split this championship deal pretty much down the middle. Uh, a couple of your respective employees aren't necessarily getting along right now, but the relationship between you and Rick has always seemed very positive and very respectful. Can you speak to that and uh, and your feelings on what he's accomplished in the sport? You've all been pretty good competition for each other over the years. Yeah, I, Rick, uh, Rick and I, we, we share uh, Texas back and forth. And of course, when I first uh, was thinking about trying to get into NASCAR, uh, Rick was there. Uh, he had Jimmy Johnson, his general manager at the time, helped us and went to a number of the appointments with us. So he helped us get started. And, you know, uh, in those days, we didn't call it an alliance, but that's what it was. And so we shared that. And I get a thrill out of getting a chance to go to the racetrack every weekend and race against so many great race teams, so many great owners. If you think about Roush and you think about Rick and you think about Penske and you think about Haas and getting a chance to go on those weekends and race against them, it's a thrill for me to be a part of this, be a part of NASCAR, a whole family. This is all we do. We love it. And it's a thrill for us to be a part of it, Dave. Thank you. Okay, our, question, our next question is gonna come from Alex Andrea. Go ahead, Alex. Hi, Coach. Um, thanks for your time. I, I'm curious, Wally Brown was on a call yesterday and said that he feels like Gibbs right now is the underdog compared to Hendrick. Um, um, I'm curious if, if you feel similarly that that's the case. Do you guys think you're the underdogs? Do you agree with him? Yeah, I think the thing about um, um, major sports, uh, pro sports, is the fact that it takes place on the racetrack. It takes place on the football field. You can't, it doesn't do any good to try and persuade somebody on something. It's a fact. And the facts are that this year we've chased the Chevys and chased Rick and um, for sure. And so I kind of feel like uh, Wally was truthful in his analysis. And, but you never know what's going to happen on the weekend. So I go to every racetrack. You know, uh, certainly this weekend at Phoenix, there's going to be a lot that happens. And we've seen it in the past. You know, I think any of these four cars could win this. And the brakes, things are going to happen. Could be on pit road. It could be uh, something that would happen on the racetrack. So I think that's the reason why we love it is for our fans and our fan base. They're, they're what makes this sport what it is. It's the greatest reality show that you can be a part of because we don't know what's going to happen. And I think all four of these cars this weekend will have a chance to win this. And then just as a, a quick follow-up with, with, with Denny's kind of post-race comments and what happened after Martinsville, 
I'm curious what you make of the feuding in terms of at what point does it get become a distraction, I guess, versus, you know, entertaining for, for the fans. Um, and did you feel like that was a kind of an appropriate reaction by him at the end of that race there? I, I think what happens in any sport, there's bitter disappointments. Uh, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat, that's part of pro sports. And uh, certainly it can happen in this sport. Um, you know, Denny, that was really frustrating for him. At Indy, he thought he could win the race and that situation took place. And then here in Martinsville, but also we all know that's part of this sport. And so I think I, I, my position on that is uh, I have always let the drivers handle everything that happens on the racetrack. Uh, and so uh, I think, you know, in this case, it was a frustration there, but I, I also think that's part of our sport. Uh, Denny's been in a long time, and um, I kind of think that that falls in the drivers. Um, it, it's in their, their, their decisions are made, and the way they handle that, they race against all those guys out there every week. And so I've always told the drivers, hey, make sure that you keep a good relationship. You, know, hey, you don't want a bunch of enemies out there. So anyway, uh, I think that's something that just happened as part of our sport. And I, I think uh, <laughs> Diddy's reaction afterwards is it was a frustration. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from Chase Wilhelm. Go ahead, Chase. Hey, thank you, Coach Gibbs, for uh, joining us today. Um, my question is, what makes this the year that Denny Hamlin can, can win his first championship compared to what we've seen years past? I think, um, I, I think Denny's uh, success and everything over these last years, as soon as we put him with Chris Gapehart, uh, I think that combination and the way that, the chemistry, the way that works is, um, they've been so consistent. And so you kind of look at that, but also you know how hard it is to win a championship. Denny's an example. Won a ton of races, won three Daytona 500s, and yet has not been able to win a championship. Has had a chance, but hasn't won it. So I, I think that, again, the reason why we appreciate championships is because they're so hard. But I think um, the fact that Chris Gabehart and the team there. Uh, and for FedEx, when you th stop and think about that, they've been with us now for those 14 years they've been with us. It's, it would be a thrill to win one for them. As we know, sponsorships are so important. We also have sport clips on that car. We have Craftsman. Craftsman uh, is on that car with Stanley Black and Decker. So, it would be a big deal for us and a big deal for those sponsors if Denny could do that. I would say what gives us a chance is Denny, his experience, and Chris Gabehart and the team. Thank you, Coach Gibbs. Appreciate it. Okay, our next question is going to come from Bob Pockris. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Coach, along those lines, what advice do you give Denny about just kind of about the – the aura of being a great driver who hasn't won the big one? I think, uh, I think that comes with all pro sports. We know that down through history, there's been a lot of great players that um, haven't won championships and Super Bowls and NASCAR championships. I mean, it's just part of it. And uh, we've had great drivers over here that are in the Hall of Fame that did not win a championship. And uh, I think Denny probably answered it the best last year when he kind of said uh, he's kind of at peace uh, with what he's been able to do. He's won Daytona 500s, won a bunch of races, has had a great sponsor, has kept them, you know, through all of the years they've been together, uh, FedEx and Denny. And we appreciate Fred and everybody over there. And so I think he's at peace with it, but also you just know he has a burning desire and gonna give it everything he's got <laughs> uh, on Sunday. 
And also, have you talked to Kyle Busch about his comments after the race Sunday night? And do you think uh, NASCAR requiring sensitivity training is the appropriate reaction? Yeah, I, I think, you know, um, Kyle, you know, knows he should not have used that word. And uh, I think NASCAR's um, response to it is, uh, is appropriate. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from Jeff Gould. Go ahead, Jeff. So, um, you know, we're used to seeing Kyle win four or five races a season like it's nothing. And, you know, now he's won three races combined in the last two years. Um, what, what do you think's missing from Kyle's team right now or, or Kyle himself? And, and how can you get him back to where we're used to seeing him? I think it's, it's that, that, that's a great point. But it also uh, illustrates, I think, how hard this sport is. Um, in 2015, Denny didn't win a race. And you see drivers struggle. Uh, Harvick, this past year, you have examples of that all the time. And you can certainly go through ebb and flow. And it just illustrates to me uh, how hard this sport is and how hard it is to win a race. And so it has been frustrating for, for Kyle, for sure. And so I, my answer to that question is every single part of our race team, you know, um, we look at every single part of it and we'll look at it in this off season, trying to handle everything about pit stops and uh, all, of the, all of the engineering part of things Every single aspect each week, each year, we try and take it apart, look at it. How can we improve, and how could how can we do a better job of giving Kyle a car that he can win races with? So you can have in, in pro sports, you can have great talent, but it, it's a team sport, and there's so much with this. You know, like I mentioned, the pit stops and our engineering group, and um, it's just it's hard. And so we'll look at every single aspect of it, try and analyze it. We did last year and uh, we need to do a better job of, of giving Kyle what it takes in a car. And then of course he looks at himself and, and tries to analyze everything. And I know Kyle does that. He gets frustrated. He's extremely competitive, but I know that he, he does a good job of what can he do to do a better job next year. So I think it's our sport. It's extremely hard. It can happen. And you work as hard as you can in the off season and every single aspect of your race team to try and do a better job. Thanks so much. Okay, our next question will come from Claire B. Lane. Go ahead, Claire. Claire, can you hear us? Thank you. Coach, I always felt like that when it came down to the final four, it was who cracked. You know, who, these are all great drivers and great teams. Who cracks? Who missteps? Who misses something? Who panics? Who whatever? But these drivers are so good. What is the difference, do you think, you know, when you get a Truex, an Elliott, uh, a Larson, and a Hamlin together? They're all the real mature sort of solid guys, right? What do you think the difference will be? Does does nerves, do you think, like in playoff games in the NFL, still figure into it with these guys, or or is it bigger than that? You know, Claire, I, I think what figures into that question is our sport and the way we have a playoff. <laughs> you think about it, it's you start with 16 and you have those three different little race races that pair it down and it goes down to 12, then it goes to eight, it goes to four. And so then it comes to one race, okay? We're so different because there's four teams in that race. That's different than any other sport. And so it's gonna be a one race, uh, make it happen. And so I think the fans love it. Uh, I love that aspect of how we get to the final four. And then I think it's, it's exciting. It's very different as a pro sport in that we have it. So it's four teams trying to 
they, they get one race to make it happen. And so it can come down to just one mistake in there. Uh, and so I think that's part of the reason why we love it. We don't know what's going to happen and we're all excited about it. I do think that all four of these teams, if you go this far and you qualify for that last race, just think about what you've gone through for this entire year. Those four teams were able to do it. And so now it could come down to just one, one thing happening on the weekend. But we all hope, for me, I hope it's all four teams have a great race day. And I, I just hope that the, the best team wins. So where do you figure in the aggressiveness you've seen? I realize this is no Martinsville. That was a cutoff race. That's really different. But there were lots of questions about respect, how much respect you show the, the drivers competing for the championship. And everybody was all wigged out over respect. How much respect are they going to give each other? What do you tell your drivers in that area? I, th I think the, for me, I've always kind of looked at it as it is our drivers. Uh, that's their world that they live in. And they have a relationship with each one of those drivers that they're racing against. And sometimes they've raced against them for years. And so I think over that long period of time, you build up respect. And I always try and encourage the drivers. I, I said, hey, it's your relationship with each one of those guys. And they're the ones that have to handle that. They're the ones that develop that relationship. And I said, I always suggest if something happens on a on racetrack that you don't like, that somebody, somebody else did, some other driver did, handle it right now. Go to them, iron it out, talk it out. But I will say this, that normally does not happen. <laughs> and so uh, as, a process, as a part of that process, one of the things we love about our sport is what? Okay, so you got the drivers compete. So all of us as fans, we got certain drivers we love and we pull for, but they compete. The owners, okay, the different owners compete. And what? The OEMs, the manufacturers compete. And I think that's one of the things our fans love about our sport. You got three different areas, three different uh, uh, groups of people that are competing against each other and competing. It is very different. I love it. Our sponsors are a big part of that. When you stop and think about it, there's no other sport where you have to have a partner, a sponsor, you know, to compete. You really don't have to have it, but in our sport you do. And they're not a, just a sponsor, they're a partner. And so for us this weekend, Bass Pro Johnny, uh, he's absolutely thrilled to be a part of this and been such a great partner for us with Martin. Uh, you got auto owners and Jeff, on that car, you got Reesers and Mark, you got Stanley Black and Decker, all those will be competing with uh, Martin this weekend. They're so excited about it. And on Denny's side, you got, you got FedEx, Sport Clips, and you got Craftsman's, you know, Stanley Black and Black and Decker. And in all those, you got uh, Norm and Interstate, who's our founding sponsor, he's on all of our cars. It is a huge deal for us. And so there are so many people excited about this. They're going to be in Phoenix. It's a fantastic facility. They redid that. I hope all fans get a chance to go there uh, and, um, you know, at some point and be a part of this process. Um, so we're all pointed towards Sunday, and it's going to be a thrill. Thank you, and good luck. Okay, Coach? You bet. All right. Our next switch is. Kelly Crandall. Go ahead, Kelly. Thank you, Amanda. Joe, I also have a question about Denny. A championship is seemingly the last thing he has to accomplish in the Cup Series. He's done, of course, so much else. I assume you won't root for one of your drivers over the other, but how much of a relief or how nice would it be to finally get that monkey off the back, not only for him, but for you guys as well, to just accomplish that and not have to talk about it any longer? Well, I think, I think certainly you're right. People always ask that question, just like it came up today. And so from that standpoint, you would like nothing better than for 
FedEx to get that championship and take sport clips with them and Stanley um, and Craftsman. And then on the other side, though, every time you think about that, you think about the other side. You got Martin, James Small, his crew chief, how, how much it would mean to James. Uh, that would be his first. Uh, Chris Gabehart, our, our crew chief for Danny, it would be his first. And I always look at it as that's it. So many people would get to experience a championship and the thrill of a championship. It's Bass Pro, it's Auto Owners, it's Reesers, it's Stanley. So it is, so many people get to enjoy this. And so that's the reason why you want it so bad. And so I don't think you can pick one. You're not gonna pick one because it's a thrill uh, for whoever gets this out of those four cars this weekend. You know what that means to them and their sponsors. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from Daniel McFadden. Go ahead, Daniel. Thanks. Uh, hi, Coach. So what is your view of NASCAR holding its the clash next year at the, the L.A. Coliseum? How big of a deal is that? do you view that as? And what, in your personal opinion, would – mean that that event is successful i love this <laughs> i was fortunate enough to be at, uh, at southern cal and play in the coliseum I, i'm thrilled about us going there and it's going to be different yes it's going to be different that's going to be a new car there's going to be so much to it but i think i honestly feel like it's going to be an awesome event and uh we're going to be thrilled to be a part of it and so I, I know what it's like to be in that stadium. It's, it's, it's a classic, unreal uh, experience. Uh, I think it's also for us to be on the West Coast there and uh, be in LA. Uh, I just think it's a huge deal for our sport. I appreciate NASCAR being that creative. And this, this is something where it took guts to make this decision. <laughs> And I applaud them for doing that. And I think that's what's going to move our sport forward. Hey, with our, you know, with the calendar of races and us being willing to go to different places, I'm excited about where we are right now. And I appreciate uh, Jim and everybody in NASCAR there uh, having the guts and, and uh, be willing to take a shot and do this. And so I think it's going to be a fun to be a part of. We don't know what's going to happen. This is going to be great. Okay, and, and going going back to what Bob asked earlier about uh, Kyle Busch and uh, the sensitivity training, you, as, as an owner, when it comes to driver conduct and how they carry themselves, do you have a a marker in mind personally for uh, a driver if they do something that would be across the line for you, where no matter how talented they may be it would be too far for you to keep them on as a driver i think that um you 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 got to understand our sport is different too in that our drivers uh represent companies and so that's always very important to us on our race team and i'm sure that every other race team out there and so that's a big deal and so that's part of the standard for our sport. And so it holds the drivers to a higher standard. And so that's just part of what we do. And they got to understand that's part of, um, that's part of, of, of what they have to do and representing all the people, not only you have to be a great driver and you know, you got to also be a great representative for companies. And that's the standard that's really important for us to answer to. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna take one final question with coach before we wrap our session today. And for that question, we're gonna to go to Zach Sternalino. Go ahead, Zach. Thanks coach. Uh, Kyle Busch is currently the only multi-time champion on the track right now. Um, obviously, I'm sure you'd like to see Denny uh, come through and get his first, but what would it mean to see Martin get that, uh, achieve that status on Sunday? Well, Martin, you know, having won the championship, he's, he's, you know, Bass Pro. I've talked about Johnny. It's just he, Johnny does so much for our sport, not only for our race team. 
uh, but for our sport period, just a huge deal. And then to have the other sponsors there, Auto Honors, Reesers, and Stanley, it's just a big, uh, a big deal. And Martin, with his career, um, it's great to see him where he is. And I, kn I know that another championship would mean a lot to him and Sherry. Um, uh, that's just a big deal. And so we would be thrilled, okay, if Martin could win this. And so it, that is certainly a big deal for him, his family, and for us. And how impressed are you that Denny has been able to compete and, and achieve uh, what he's been able to this year while still being in the midst of his first year as a car owner as well? Um, you know, he's had to oversee uh, that, that 23 XI team grow, um, but he's still uh, not just in the championship four, but has been one of the, the top cars of the season. I think for all of us in NASCAR, when Denny uh, made that decision to become an owner, uh, first of all, I told him, I'm not sure how smart that is. <laughs> I want to be a driver. Okay, <laughs> I want to make all the money and have to not have to pay all those people to work on his race car. But anyway, I, I think all of us, when he made that decision, we all said, oh, my gosh, you know, can you do this, drive a race car and everything? And so I think he's just done a great job. If anything, it probably gives you a different perspective, you know, uh, that you go from being just a driver to now he owns a race team, understands all that it takes, sponsorship and all of that. And so I think it probably gives you a perspective. And sometimes uh, that I'm sure that may in some cases even help Denny. But I think we all had a question about that. You know, is it too much? But I think it's obviously uh, the results, the great thing about sports. You can't talk your way or, you know, you got to drive your way and race your way. And Denny's done it. And so he's really handled this year. Everything that he's had to go through, he's just done a great job of handling it. Appreciate your time. Thanks. All right, Coach, thank you again for joining us. We know you are very busy, and we appreciate you giving us some time before this weekend. Um, best of luck. And um, anything else you want to say before we wrap? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you for doing that. The Xfinity, you know, we got Daniel Hemrick, uh, Dave Rogers, the crew chief there, Poppy Bank, Bill Gallagher, all those guys, they're going to race for a championship. That's awesome. Our 54 car in Xfinity 2 with Chris Gale and all the drivers we've had there, we get to go for an owner's championship. And then in ARCA, we got Sammy Smith has won the East. And then Ty has, gets a, has won the Arkham and Arts championship and Mark McFarland's the crew chief there. I wanted to mention all those because that's all going to be played out, too, at Phoenix this weekend. So it's going to make for a great weekend. And we're thrilled to be a part of it in each one of those series. All right. Well, best of luck in, in all of those um, championship battles. And uh, like we said, we really appreciate your time today. And best of luck uh, this weekend in Phoenix. Well, thank you all. Thank you all for letting me be a part of uh, this session. Thank you.